Kentucky, number 24, Jeff Jones. From River Forest, Illinois, a 6'2 junior, number 21, Bob Bender. A senior at 5'11 from King William, Virginia, number 20, Bobby Stokes. And from Jersey City, New Jersey, at 6'5, a senior, number 34, Jim Spinarco. The Cavaliers are coached by Mr. Perry Holland and Duke by Mr. Bill Foster. Bill Foster huddling with the Duke Blue Devils, now considered to be the team to catch here, so certainly the team to catch, but the team to beat. The Atlantic Coast Conference, Foster in his fifth season as head coach of the Blue Devils. The last two or three years, they've been a very tough contender. Came from last place to win the conference a year ago and went all the way to the final game in St. Louis. Virginia will be on their traveling blue with the orange numbers and due to the home white. This will be the only jump ball of the game coming up, of course. All jump ball situations now on rotate and out of bounds play. Well, Billy, I think it's going to be a good game. The atmosphere is pretty good and two fine teams. I'm anxious to see how Hor Harold Morrison reacts. You can remember what it was two seasons ago. He was an everyday starter for Duke University. I'd be anxious to see how he blends in here as a starter early in the ball game and how long Bill Foster can afford to go without Gene Banks in the game. Interesting move by Foster putting Morrison in at Banks' spot, but uh, Taylor had more playing time. Duke controls the tap, so the Blue Devils are right to work. Virginia in a zone, that's a little different for them. Denard in the corner. You know, Kenny has a habit of coming out and making the first shot for Duke. I don't know how many times he does that, but uh, he seems to get hot from that corner and really makes his zone have to work. And it's going to be Denard guarding Jeff Lamp. That'll be an interesting matchup to watch because, you know, Virginia will go to here against Castellan breaking across the top and ties it up. Of course, Castellan is really effective to bring the other team's center out because he'd rather shoot from the 15-foot range anyway. Zone again by Virginia. This surprise you, Bill? You think they'll stay with it long? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. What I think there's they're really aware of is Mike Jaminski. They're trying to pack on in there and hope that Duke will miss some outside shots. They can't afford to let Jaminski get started early. Monarchal a little weak. Good outlet pass by Kessler. It's a two-on-one. This is Lamp driving. Oh, beautiful Duke. play. And rebound is off by Monarchal. Well, that brought Holland to his feet. He's hot. Back at the other end. Weak side to Bender. Virginia is packed back in the zone again. Denard trying for two in a row. Down it goes to Gates. Virginia running. Here is Stokes looking in the middle of the lap, giving it to him for the way out for Virginia Lee. Cavaliers really ripping, Bill. Well, they ought to be able to break fairly well out of this zone because they're playing a 2-1-2 two -two with Lamp in the center. Of course, he can go on the break almost unrestricted there. Now Duke looking for the tie. Ball was kicked over there by Jeff Jones. And with Jones... And Stokes on the wing. You got two good ball handlers there. No matter what side they get the outlet pass on. And thrown away. Right off the fingertips of Bender. Virginia is going to get it. Cavaliers are a very steady ball club. You'll very seldom rattle them. Although Duke almost blew them off the court in Charlottesville, winning 84 to 66. This tough man to man by Duke, Kenny Denard, really trying to keep the ball away from Lamp. There he goes. He's tough to keep away, as you can see. Jeff Lamp's second basket. Virginia up to lead the four. Six to two with two minutes gone. And you see the versatility of a lamp. Just the other day, you had Frank Johnson guarding him. Frank, a much smaller man with quickness. Now you have a Kenny Denard, a big and powerful defensive player. Duke attacking the zone. Outside shot by Bender. Oh, he's a steady player. He is Bob Bender. Six to four. Jeff Jones down quickly to land. Down the middle, Castle and driving in on Jaminski. Rebound by Morrison. Batted away, it'll go to Duke. Batted out by Castle. Duke with a chance to tie. Virginia Day six to four. You notice how everybody from Duke took off to the other end on the fast break opportunity that time. Castle and tried to tie up the throw in. That's dangerous to run away from the man making the pass. Duke went the fast tempo, but didn't have been going fast. Here's Morrison with a rebound inside. Might have been pushing off. He pushed. Morrison picks up the first foul of the ball game against anybody. Perhaps a little bit fired up tonight. He is getting a start, an unusual one. His first one this year, to my knowledge. Replacing 
Gene Banks had been a fixture before he suffered a foot injury in the game against Maryland last Saturday. You notice how Kenny Denard has had three shots from the corner already in this ball game. That is an area where the other teams are saying, okay, let's let Denard beat us or show us that he can beat us. So that area is wide open, even in the zone defense. Jeff Jones picks up his dribble in trouble now inside. There goes Gates with a spinning shot. Spinarco comes down with it. Didn't again look at the tie. We played almost three minutes. You can see Castellan really concerned about Jaminski. Spinarco, uh, Jaminski tries to stuff it, and there's a foul on the play. Jaminski pushed off by Gates. See the play here, Jim. And here, of course, you're playing the zone also. You're trying to keep the ball away from Jaminski. You give him inside position. Castellan trying to come off over the back, and there's Gates getting with the arm, just as you pointed out. That almost turned out in uh, getting the advantage of the replay. Here's Banks coming in. Banks is in the lineup now replacing Morrison. So Foster's going to see how his prize power forward looks with a bruised right foot. Warmed up in another pair of shoes, but now he has on his regular shoes. Six to four, Virginia. Notice again the corner wide open. There's Spinarco in it this time. It's only two men back in the zone. They're going to get that corner shot. There goes Spinarco going through, and he's hooked and foul. You split defense in like that. They'll almost always draw a reach in foul. It's on Jeff Jones, his first. Good move by Jim Spinarco breaking down through there. Jim, the, the Virginia's zone, uh, the style of zone that they're playing allows the deep corners to be open, but the zone is really not active right now. And I want to point out what I think is happening is that they're really concentrating on where Jaminski is and the other fellows right now having a field goal. Six to five, Spinarco can tie it up. A fourth leading score of all time for Duke. Needs 33 more to reach a tie with Dick Grove. Six, six, tie. Four, Bobby, six, well, I did. He's a clever ball player, really solid. Really cool. Both under pressure. They get it to Jeff Lamp on the side. Way down by Murray. By Banks, and he's fouled by Castellan. So Banks immediately draws a foul from Steve Castellan, the first one on the Virginia Center. And Duke has a chance to break back on top. Now getting possession here with a 6 6 tie. Kind of got the feeling that Bill Foster did not like the way that his team was going early in the ball game to make that substitution for Banks. Probably like to hold him out for a much longer period of time. Now the zone's picking up in density a little bit. Walking against Duke that turns it over to Virginia. So the Cavaliers take over with a 6-6 tie up on the board. Terry Holland having a word here with uh, Terry Gates. Still haven't seen anything out of Lee Raker, but we expect to before the night's over. One four offense now by Virginia. Castellan over Domensky. Castellan now has hit two of those, and Virginia breaks back in the lead, eight to six. They also have stopped the Duke break so far. Domensky down low for the hook, rebound. Castellan sweeps it off. And here comes Lamp again, leading the fast break. Lamp bounce pass to Soak, who pushed and fouled by Spinarco. Wasn't a bad foul because he had an open lane. Well, that was a beautiful catch by Bobby Stokes. The ball was uh, thrown right through like threading a needle there, and he was still able to get it on the short hop and make the play. Now there's timeout on the court. The score, Virginia 8 and Duke 6. Next time you fly, say hello to Piedmont Airlines, the quick, comfortable way to go whether you're flying for business or a holiday. Our roomy jets go to where the business is. Small cities, big cities, over 90 cities in all. We've got pleasure flights to America's resorts, too. The beaches, golf courses, your favorite ski country. See your travel agent or give us a call. Say hello, say hello, hello, Piedmont. My Charlie loves chicken, so I buy nothing but the best. Holly Farms. I know it's fresh, always tender, and it tastes so good. Hi, Mom. Hi, Charlie. Hi, dear. Hi, Big Charlie. Holly Farms chicken. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, wow. We're nothing but the best. We'll do nothing but the best for you. Holly Farms. Nothing but the best for you. Don't your Charlies deserve the best? My folks have been married 25 years today. 
was six months from now, no problem. But as it was, I came up a little short and had to borrow a couple hundred bucks from NCNB. You know, they really understood how I felt. I mean, my folks have been doing things for me all my life. It's kind of nice to be able to start paying them back. <laughs> Bobby Stokes at the line for Virginia. He's had a career this year against Wake Forest. He scored 34 points in two games against Wake Forest. His average is seven points a game. Jim, the Duke crowd's very silent so far in the game, and we've seen away from home uh, when a team can come in and stay in the ball game early. They really do quiet that crowd down. And I would imagine sooner or later either a great play by Duke or the crowd themselves. Now here they are starting to get up and feel that they've got to get into the game. It's a big factor when you go away from home that the crowd is really into it. Virginia up by four, 10 to six. Still in the zone. Virginia's already proven, as we mentioned at the start of the show, they can play away from home. Snarkle down the corner that Camille afford to leave him take that shot. Well, the difference in the zone is that when Snarkle goes to the corner, they follow him on down there. They're not as concerned when Denard goes to the corner. Good pass. There goes Snarkle down the middle. There's a collision. That's a blocking foul on Jones. Jeff Jones, Virginia. Second foul on the prize freshman from Owensboro, Kentucky. Home of the great Cliff Hagen. 10 to 6, Virginia leads. No shooting there. It'll be an inbounds play. That was team foul number four against the Cavaliers. Duke is going to Lee Raker comes in for Virginia. Number 25. Hasn't played for four games. Brilliant sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky. Averaging over 17 points a game. You see if the layoff hurt him, Bill. Well, now we have Raker and Banks two of the three-game stories both in there. There goes Bender way outside. Rebound is taken down by Gates. Boy, he's a tough kid, isn't he? Right in the middle of the Duke uh, big guys. 10 to 6. 4.8 by Virginia. Waiting for Raker to touch the ball for the first time here in the game. And now, of course, there's a switch in defense assignment. Spinarkle on Lamp, and he lost it. Yeah, Lamp, you can't afford to lose him, or you're going to lose part of the ball game. 12 to 6, the biggest thing by Virginia. I'm kind of surprised unless they just got messed up on assignment. They tried the front down here, and Castellan is getting the outlet pass, and Stroke draws the foul on Bender, and Virginia's been the alert team. They, they have. Duke is kind of sound asleep. Virginia playing super basketball right now. Bill Foster trying to stir something up among his players. By the way, Tate Armstrong was down on the Duke bench tonight. One of the great shooting guards that Duke's had here in recent years. Duke in a zone, maybe just in the out-of-bounds play. A 1-3-1, one, one. let's see if they match up. Yeah. I don't know. I think they feel they've got a bad matchup for, for Lamp and Raker in the game. But Arco really trying to shade on Lamp. That was Raker the first time touching the ball. Been a long layoff, and he's not going to be a peak physical for him, I'm sure. See, they're really matching up with Lamp in mind at all times to let Gates alone. Now Lamp was Panarco on him. And there's Castle wide open. Oh, he worked that ball beautifully. He surely did, because both the, the matchup of the zone was really concerned about Raker and Lamp. Gates and Castle and wide open. Virginia was patient enough to get it to the right man. 14 to 6. Virginia with the biggest lead of the game. Eight points. We're still in the first seven minutes. Panarco outside. 14 to 8. They're back to man to man now. Gene Banks thought they were still playing his own. They've switched man. They've taken Denard off of Lamp. And it goes through the middle by Spinarkel and Spinarkel fouls him. So Spinarkel switched off on the Lamp, picked up his second personal foul, and Lamp's going to be a problem for Duke. I don't understand that, uh, Jim, why they would go ahead and take Kenny Denard off of Lamp because he was at least staying with him. Spinarkel really having his problems now, and of course you don't know what Raker's going to do, so you just have to take a chance. On him, put your best defensive player on Lamp. Well, a move by Bill Foster, Bill. He's brought in a fresh new team. Entire new five is in there. And they're in the 1-3-1. One, Johnny one. Harrell comes out to put a little pressure on Bobby Stokes. Scott gets Steve Gray, Morrison. Weak side pass to Lamp. 
Put a tell fundamentally sound Lamp is when he catches the ball. He's always got two hands on it. There goes Rakers. First shot. In and out. Rebound Morris. Six point lead by Virginia. 14 to 8. Crowd really roaring now. They're starting to get into the ball game. It's going to be no cakewalk. When you play Virginia, you're playing a real smart basketball team that knows how the game's supposed to be played. Gray and Suttis, good outside shooters here in this good lineup. Jim Suttis down the right corner. That's Gray, out of the point. Scott gets the center. Morrison, Harold, the other two. This particular zone prevents the shots that are going to be perimeter tight. The, the middle is wide open. Fellas breaking in and out of there. So far, Duke uh, hasn't been able to get to it. What's happening here? The Duke regulars are resting all while all this is going on and no damage being done. Sutter, way out. Rebound, Castellan. Boy, Virginia's really looked for the outlet pass more than any other game I've seen them this year. 14 to 8, 1 3 1 trap. Boy, Stokes recognized that immediately. That goes Castellan, too. Cannot get it. Steps on the timeline. A turnover to Duke. Good job by the official right on top. There again, pointing out the three man crew, Jim. There's the positioning of the third man with no way he could have been out there for a loose ball at half court. 11 minutes and 54 seconds to go in the half. There's timeout on the court. They'll score Virginia 14 and Duke 8. Group insurance? Can't run a business without it. I used to think it was a necessary evil, the expense, the paperwork, but the pilot knew it was bugging me. Pilot Life's group specialist took over a lot of the details. Questions get answered fast. Benefits paid fast, or a lot less than I thought. Group insurance? No problem, with a little help from the pilot. Hey! hey. Pilot helps you to love. Doesn't anybody make a sporty car that looks like a million? But doesn't cost like a million. Toyota, what have you got? The Toyota Celica GT Sport Coupe. Your money's worth and more in a beautiful package. You got a roomy four-passenger cockpit, five speeds, full instrumentation. The Toyota Celica GT Sport Coupe. A beautiful value. Toyota, you've got it. You asked for it. You got it, Toyota. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Atlantic Coast Conference and the CD Sales and Company. And any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers on this program have been approved and contracted for by the CD Sales and Company. Files up again for Duke University, ranked third in the nation. They won major goal this year, four for the other. And a big game coming up in uh, a week or so on February 18th against fifth ranked Louisville down in Charlotte. That's looming as one of the important games left of the year. Goes Harold driving through. Rebound, lost that will go to Virginia. Jimmy didn't make the shot, but Duke should have picked something up on that particular play. When he made penetration, nobody really tried to stop him. Bobby Stokes finds the open man. Virginia well drilled here in handling the trapping defense. Mike Owens into the ball game now also. So now Virginia has two excellent shooters to work against that zone on the step out. Plus Laker, they got three. Lamp double team looking for help. Well, they actually have four. Well, they actually have five guys to shoot. I'm thinking of their big people, Jim. That lad just hit his fourth. As yeah, please, they're going to count. There was a foul on the play. 14 to 8. The score is still up there. Basket is good. 16 to 8. Virginia back to an eight point lead. And a foul on the play. Did you see who committed the foul, Bill? No, I didn't. It? Well, it was Steve Gray. He just picked it up. First foul on Gray. So that possible three-point play. Jim, you look at this team out on the floor right now with Owens and Stokes and Raker and Lamp and Castle. It's a great shooting ball club that's out there. 17 to 8. Virginia with a nine-point lead over Duke. Cavaliers haven't forgot that walloping they took in Charlottesville. Here's Spinarco. Way out of the corner gets the zone. Spinarco now seems to have taken charge here and trying to break up the Virginia zone. Giving up the press for the moment. Back to man to man. It's Bill Spinarkle on Lamp. Virginia would be smart to get that ball to Lamp. Makes Spinarkle work. There he is. Lamp. Rebound. Bernard gets the outward pass. Spinarkle on the break. Rebound by Castellan. Good outward pass again. 
Here comes Lamp three on two. Right side, Raker. Raker. Ah, still can't break through him as a foul on Zeminski. Well, there's a case where Raker just in the past couple of weeks has not had to run like 70 feet, stop and take a jump shot. You can't imagine how that throws off your touch. Bill, one of the amazing things to me in this game, we played 10 minutes, about a fourth of the game, and Zeminski hasn't even been hurt from well, he took one shot, and that, that is all. The zone is definitely set to keep him out of the game as much as possible. The other players are going to have to pick up the slack. Ah, that will be Virginia's ball. Deflected out by Bender, and attempting to intercept was not a good inbounds pass, by the way. Money works right on top of the call. 17 to 10, seven point lead by Virginia. Oh, look how they're lined up here for the inbounds play. Virginia's offense against this Duke zone sets all four men almost down on the baseline to break out of there. They want to back that zone back in as far as they can. A screen for Raker. He's trying to break out. That's his first shot. After two misses, Raker comes through. 19 to 10. Virginia again by nine. Second time they live by that. Well, midway in the first half. Gene Banks back in there. Inside Zeminski. And Zeminski's foul by Raker. First foul on Lee Raker. Team foul number five, look at it again. Well, you mentioned it, Jim, that Jaminski hadn't touched the ball much at all. Owens really should have been fronting Jaminski a little bit more. Probably a pretty wise foul, but because it keeps Jaminski away from getting that first field goal. Five team fouls on Virginia. Duke's committed six. Yeah, Virginia's zone. Now, watching Spinarco a little closer now. Now, Owens can't afford to stay with Spinarco because he knows who's in there behind. There's going to be shots available. There's going to be penetration available. Oh, oh what a catch. Banks on a great leap. Oh, what a play. Gene Banks got in behind the zone. 19 to 12. Yeah, well, they leave Owens wide open. And a flash in the board. Castellan foul. Number two on Steve Castellan. Now 16 fouls on each team. Well, that was a great play by Gene Banks at the other end of the floor. And he also was on the boards down at this end defensively. So he's playing a total 90 feet. Bell is the first time he's really tested the injured foot. But he went up with authority that time. That's Taylor in the lineup for the first time for Duke. Question number 12, right there. You see that Bill Foster wants Spinarco down on the wing because he knows that's where the openings are. There he is, Spinarco outside. Rebound, Raker. Seven point lead by Virginia, 19 to 12. And the pace is exactly what Terry Holland must have envisioned to be perfect for his team. Nobody running up and down the court like wild men just taking the break when it's available. Raker working the baseline. Ian Lamb. Out of the way, loose ball, and it's going to be Virginia's ball. Jeff Jones inside. Mike Owens open again. And it is tapped out of bounds. It'll be Duke's ball. Owens has not hit that shot the way he did Saturday against Wake Forest. Well, he was certainly open. Terry Holland and down the line, Bill Foster. As Bob Bender returns, that'll move Vince Taylor down to a forward spot. So Bill Foster using a lot of combination of players. Now he can match up pretty well with this team because Taylor's a leaper. And Virginia basically has three smaller fellows in the game. Spinarco draws, an, or rather Jaminski draws another foul. This one will be on Owens. And now they go to the bonus. One on Owens. Duke, an excellent free-throwing team, as you know. This will give you an idea of what they're trying to do to, to Jaminski. When he touches the ball, there's going to be four players ready to collapse inside on him. Now we start the one and one. Kaminsky goes to the line. Second and Atlantic Coast Conference scoring and rebounding. Fourth and field goal percentage. High among the leaders in many categories. Rebound comes down to Raker. Virginia's got it. Jones walks. Great, oh, great move by Bender. Good job by Gene Banks also jumping right up in there. 19 to 12, the Virginia lead, but they turn it back over to Duke. Bender outside the zone. 
Rebound put up by Bank. A lot of power. 19-14. Duke coming back now. They cut it to five with eight minutes to go in the first half. Eight ten. Not one cast when they get too wide. There goes Wake for over Banks. Oh. Hit it, or rather over Taylor. Almost hit it. It was a foul by Taylor, as you saw. They'll get two shots. Now with seven minutes, 59 seconds to go on the half. There's timeout on the court. The score, Virginia 19 and Duke 14. It was a long, hard run, but I finally won. Now it's all behind. Got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. There are a lot of beers, but there's only one, Pabst. It's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients. And you can taste it. I've got Pabst Blue Ribbon on my mind. You know, I'll bet there was a lot of good country cooking that came from that old log cabin. Probably baked bread and an iron skillet on an open hearth. And don't you know that was a good aroma. And you can still get bread baked from the old-timey recipes. It's called Old Hearth, Bunny Old Hearth. Just plain, down-home, old-timey, natural bread. No preservatives and baked with 100% pure vegetable shortening. So for down-home, old-timey bread, reach for Old Hearth, Bunny Old Hearth, the three meals a day bread. Minutes in the first half we played, and Virginia holding a five-point lead. They've been up by nine twice, 19 to 14, led by Jeff Lamp and Steve Castellan this far. And John Mike Jeminski has been still so far by the Virginia zone defense. Now, uh, Jim, when you play away from home, the key thing you're trying to do is create the tempo that's best suited for you. And I think Virginia has done it beautifully so far in the first half. Second best free throwing percentage in the league is held by Lee Raker here, 87 plus. And even in that case, under game conditions, and you, you have to run up and down the floor, it's a lot different than shooting, and he just hasn't had a chance to be in condition. Raker's been out for four games. 20 to 14, Virginia by six. Virginia's still in the zone. They're basically a man for man. How they leave Spinarkle open. Well, they're really trying to keep Jaminski out of the ball game, and they're doing a good job with it, so the other two players have to pick up. Good catch by Owens on the block pass. Owens again. Now he'll try one more time and breaks through after two misses. 22 to 16, Virginia. Seven and a half minutes go. Good move by Taylor and a good switch on the zone. Play by quick. Gates. Really quick. He's incredibly quick. There he is. Ben Taylor again around his man. Unbelievable. Ben Taylor. That's from standing still twice in a row. 22 to 18. Just ball back with a four points. And man to man. The fans are starting to get in the game now. Quick one by Lamp. Jeff Lamp on an extremely quick release. 11 points to Lamp. 24 to 18. Bring it back to six with seven minutes to go in the half. Wonder if this might be a time bomb here. It's really going to explode. Well, they've still given up the shot on Sinarco and down in the corner where Taylor is. Sinarco could have had it that time. A pass out and a pass right back will get him an easy shot. They still want to hit Jeminski on the inside. There he is. Jeminski's banking. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. That, wasn't even, shot. that wasn't even a good shot because he was... Almost in a layout position and still made it. 24 to 20. Jaminski looked like it was just out of frustration he was going to shoot the ball. Been shut out so far. Well, lamp, 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 fake, gets it off. Rebound is by Owens. Inside, easy lamp, and he missed it. Rebound, Jaminski. Just got a chance to cut it to two. They score here, the crowd, they come down. That's Taylor. Rebound by Lamp. First of all, player Lamp. Virginia 24 20. The ball is kicked back in, but uh, Jaminski had to go out of bounds to recover. Still be Virginia's ball. Kenny Denard will replace Vince Taylor in the lineup. Boy, did he make some move a moment ago. 
Well, he showed his quickness the very first time we ever put our eyes on this young man, but here you're gonna see the fake, no walk on the play either. Just blew it on by. He's gonna be a great one. That was a Jerry West move, Bill. Gonna be a great one. 24-20. Four point lead by Virginia with 5.44 to go in the first half from Durham. Virginia inbounds by Duke setting up at his zone. Dangerous place to throw that ball. 2-3 zone now matching up again. Duke has shown us a man for man. They had a 1-3-1, a 1-3-1 trap, and now a 2-3 zone. Bobby Stokes is surveying the situation here. And this helps the Virginia team again to take up a little bit of time, keep the momentum in their favor. Uh, Virginia looks like they don't want to play against well, the Bill Foster's so. going to have to go man to man with them. He's going to have to put the pressure on. Uh, here's the matchup. They're switching over right now to man for man. Team behind must force the issue. Now what, what I think they've done, Jim, I think they've gone to a 1-3-1 one, one type zone to make it look like it's man-to-man, -man, but they're still playing the zone. I'm surprised Virginia doesn't pull it back out again. Now they recognize. Of course, all they need lamp is for a moment, and he's fouled by Denard. Kenny Denard fouling. That'll send Jeff Lamp to the line. 84% shooter. There's Denard. That's his first foul. Personal fouling has been one of his problems. First one tonight. Lamp yep. comes with a good, quick jump stop, and he, and he takes full advantage. You know, Jim, they list him at 6'7". He might not be 6'7", but he reminds me an awful lot of Rick Barry in the type of size. He has yeah. good long arms and looks like he's slow, but then when you get to him, he gets away from it. Jack Marin, he was built that way. That's right. Here we see the play, good pass, and now watch this jump stop. Boy, that's a powerful jump. Now, he can do a lot of things off of that position. Lamb now with 13 points. He's the leading scorer in the ACC. 26 to 20, six-point lead by Virginia. Part of the zone package, Jaminski allowed a couple. Yeah, he's going to think he had on a Virginia uniform tonight, as tight as they are packed in back against him. The attack point's got to be the corner. Down there where Banks is. Banks, oh, good pass to Spinarco. Outside. Jaminski hooks it up. Blocked oh, out by Castleman. Oh, what a play by Castleman. Uh, Jaminski just fumbled it out. Well, Mike doesn't normally have him hitting him back his way. It's usually the other way around and probably upset him a little bit. Well, we got to see play. that again. Watch it. Well, that was some pass by Banks to get it out to Spinarco. Good shot by Spinarco. Kenny Denard almost getting a piece of it. And here's Castleman going up. Good block. Now with four minutes, 14 to go in the first half, there's a timeout on the court. The score, Virginia 26 and Duke 20. You hungry, Ernie? Like a bear. You know what I'm thinking about? Hardy's Big Cheese. Mm. Two pure beef burgers, charbroiled, with a whole lot of tangy melted mm. cheese all. I must be dreaming. I can smell that big cheese. Well, open your eyes, good buddy, and you can see it. <laughs> Bless your long little heart. Hardy's best eaten in town, up and down and all around. with a nation's third-ranked team and in trouble here on this home court in the first half with a little over four minutes to go trailing by six points to a fired-up Virginia band of Wahoos. Then they are in a little trouble uh, from a standpoint of the tempo of the game. I don't think that Bill Foster feels he's in trouble score-wise, and I'm sure Terry Holland's very satisfied with his performance, but the tempo of the game definitely is in Virginia favor this first half. Back into the zone defense again. See if Virginia pulls it out. This zone's really packed in there, too. I think it'd be a smart move for Bobby Stokes to pull the ball back out. 
Bill Foster might have just tested them during that time. I'd say, hey, let's go zone, see what they do. If they're going to play, we'll stay in it. Very patient team. Castle on the Beautiful. inside. They're working beautifully. Steve Castle on a set play against the zone. 28 to 20. All you can do more against the zone is just shoot outside. Yeah, that was beautiful team. Good teamwork. Well conceived play. Eight point lead by Virginia. Now on the triangle. Here's Banks beating out to the nod. Charging two. And it's a foul on Lamp reaching in. He knew it. Yep, that'll be number one on Jeff Lamp. One and one into Denard. Kenny shooting at a clip of only 500 from the free throw line. He's at 20 out of 40. Well, he's a better athlete than that. You know, sometimes a fellow's not a good shooter, but an athlete can make 50%. He just will the ball to the back. Teams trailing by eight, a one and one. Just the bonus. Kenny was injured in the first Virginia game early. Didn't even score in that contest. So he's already four points over that. Full court pressure. 28-22. Bobby Stokes sees that immediately. Ball was tipped down there, but Stokes gets the return pass. That's all he wanted. Good pass. Yeah, Stokes is wide open. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, work here by University of Virginia. 30 to 22. You're seeing a well-oiled machine out there in Virginia. Well coached and a good team concept. Duke down by eight points. Banks looking in. Ball batted away. Crossed, intercepted by Lamp. And Lamp is fouled by Spinarco with his third. Three fouls on Jim Spinarco, one of the Duke main cogs. And we're still in the first half with over two and a half minutes to go. Well, it was a good call. You saw Gene Banks right here on this particular play. Tried to make the pass. Lamp anticipated beautifully. Spinarco just reached it in. It's one of those touch fouls, but it was called. And he also puts up one of the hottest shooters in the league. Jeff Lamp. Vince Taylor, number 12, returns to Duke. Freshman forward. They bring Harrell out, leaving in uh, Spinarco. Jim, here's where I think it's a good move for the University of Virginia the next time down the court to see who Spinarco's guard. Now, if Duke stays in his own, which they'll probably try to do, just pull it out and say, fellas, we're not playing anymore this half. Force uh, Spinarco to play somebody man-to-man, -man, pick up that fourth foul while he's in the game, which would be really tough on Duke. That's the biggest lead of the game by Virginia. 10 points at 32-22. 2.35 to go on the half. Corners are still the place to attack. Vince Taylor, here he goes uh, inside. The bank's blocked outside. Here comes Virginia's Bobby Stokes. Stokes is going to take it in for the layup. Rebound is off to Spinarco. Now Denard will come down with Catherine. Spinarco back, gets the short jump shot. Rebounds off to Stokes. He's got Lamp now. Lamp is coming in on Taylor. Makes the smart stop. Jeff Lamp saw Taylor, the quick man, and held up. He's got 17 points. You know what the smart play there was? Steve Castle and not getting involved in a fast break. He stayed back to try to uh, contain Duke University. Just a great play on his part that will never show up in the statistics. Virginia leads by 12. Less than two minutes to go on the half. Denard, baseline. Rebound is off by Raker. Not a good oh, pass. pass. Great play by Denard. Andrew Jaminski goes for the spin. Rebound back, puts it up, and he's fouled by Gates. You can see the Duke's getting a little frustrated out there right now. Good move by Bill Foster to get Spinarco out of the game. Second foul by Gates. They're just good battling in there by Banks. He's such a powerful player. He's coming out of there in uh, full fury. Gene Banks now for the two shots coming for Duke. Blue Devils trail by 12 points at 34 to 22 with 1.35 to go. And Virginia is one of the toughest catch up two teams in the league. Well, somehow Duke has to figure out a way to get the, the tempo speeded up a great deal. There's a minute and 35 to go, and Virginia can really be patient at this time. I think that was a real smart move by Bill Foster to get Spinarco out of there. You're not going to make a comeback in a minute and 35 seconds. And you couldn't afford to have uh, Four a fouls, situation huh? where Spinarco put, could pick up his fourth. Exactly. Good point. Rebound by Bender. A big, big rebound by Duke. They got a chance to turn it into a three-point play here. 34 to 23. 
They're still looking for Jaminski on the inside. Thanks to best passer, probably. Well, Virginia's got so many men around. Then Jaminski. Oh, great catch by Banks on the follow. Oh, he's super. Incredible play by Gene Banks. 34-25, just like that. Dukes cut it back to nine. One minute to go. One minute, seven seconds in the first half. Virginia now will try to be very patient here, I'm sure. Dukes realizing that's going to pressure man from that defense. Well, that's another thing that Duke was able to do by getting Sinarco out of the game, go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Here's Raker on the outside. Sharp shooter from Louisville. 36-25, Virginia. 45 seconds to go in the half. Virginia's going to lead at the intermission. Once again, they're just not going to let Jaminski handle the ball. The calculated gamble by Terry Holland so far is really paying off. But a brilliant uh, save plan so far. Bender way out, goes out of bounds, and it'll be Virginia's ball. 28 seconds to go in the half. The Cavaliers are dominating the play at the moment with a 36-25 lead. Bobby Stokes, clever. Experienced ball player lost that one when he tried to make the reverse. Now wait a minute. We're gonna call uh, gonna call a three no, second call. No uh, bat. I think they call three second call. You're right. I think Stokes double dribble, Bill, and realize it, and none of the officials well, saw it. Now one thing, one problem we might have, I didn't see the basket down the other end of the court that he dunked the ball. I was looking down here at the three second call, and I believe that's what it was. Bill Foster and everyone agreed. 20 seconds to go on the half. A dunk on a dead ball, of course, can be a, yep. can be a technical. That's right. They did. Virginia people saying that he dunked the ball. I, I'll be honest with you. I was looking in the other direction. All right, Virginia's going to stay in its zone. 15 seconds to go. Duke looking for a shot here that can cut the margin down. 10 seconds to go. It's Dean Banks. He's the guy to put some life into him. Banks shot blocked, and Ramp got it with three seconds to go. That's Virginia's fourth. just going to hold on. That's the fourth block by Castleman. Super oh, job in that half. 11 point lead for Terry Holland's Virginia Cavaliers here over the number one team in the ACC, the Duke Blue Devils. So that's the end of the first half of play with a score. Virginia 36 and Duke 25. We'll be back in a moment with our halftime show. Feeling night, people. Feeling like me? Got a headache and upset stomach? Well, here's the most beautiful sound of the evening. Listen to the sound of fast relief. Alka Seltzer. It instantly begins to break up acid indigestion. It speeds relief to your aching head. That sounds fast. That sounds fast. That sounds fast. You feeling better, people? So what do you say? Oh, what a relief it is. Fast, fast, fast. Uh, Jim, we saw in the first half the pressures of being number one, and when you go out there, you got to play hard every night. They're a good dish on the outside. And we saw Steve Castle and have an excellent first half, and there he is making a block on Gene Banks. And Banks is tough to block because he not only gets up in the air well, but he uses his body well. Well, no question, uh, Virginia's had one sharp performance here in the first half. They told the Saturday Bill they'd set their sights toward winning the ACC this year, even though they have three losses in the league. They're in third place, and they had to come down here to play Duke. But so far, they've done the job. Well, they have, and of course, Duke can be uh, real thankful that this fellow wasn't out for the game completely. I'm speaking of Gene Banks because he's been a tower of strength on the inside. Made an incredible rebound and turnaround jump shot right here. And he has been one of the real highlights for Duke in the first half. And that guy, number 43, Mike Jaminski, as I said, ought to be wearing a Virginia uniform tonight because they've been sandwiched around him all night long. Not the way he's been playing. It's just the way no, I don't mean that as derogatory. Again. I mean that they just are clamping him. We pause now for station identification. This is the Atlantic Coast Conference Television Network. Where can you find a variety of services all aimed at helping you get a job? at your local North Carolina Employment Security Commission's job service.
after hour. The new WYYD FM Stereo 96 is just as bright and beautiful as a sparkling waterfall. WYYD FM Stereo 96. Just beautiful music, 24 hours a day. Mom, we got a present for you. It's... When you get home. Let's go. You can install the Stanley do-it-yourself garage door opener in about four hours. Everything comes in the box. Just assemble it, put it up, and plug it in. Surprise. The Stanley do-it-yourself garage door opener. It. It's a very nice thing to do for somebody else. He did it so fast. He want to help you do things right. Available for Valentine gift-giving at Carolina Builders Corporation and Lowe's Store. The one and only for ACC basketball. Well, maybe a little unexpected turn of events. Not that Virginia wasn't capable of pulling the upset, but the whole 11-point lead here at uh, Duke on this floor, that's quite an accomplishment, Bill, even for a half. Well, it is, and I thought Virginia played very well, and it's the kind of tempo you'd like to establish away from home. Took Duke out of that running, powerful ball game that Duke likes to play. And right now, I think that, that Duke is in real problems unless they can come out the second half and just completely turn things over as far as the style of play. Uh, that's tough to do against Virginia because it's a smart club. Let's analyze Virginia here for a minute, Bill. They've done this playing a zone defense the entire first half. Now, not only do they not often play zone, I think they hate the zone. Well, I don't remember Terry Holland ever playing this particular zone. This zone was designed, and the style of play in the zone was designed for Mike Jeminski. That's kind of obvious. They're not covering the corners at all. They're dropping a man from the middle back in, so Jeminski really has three people around him. When you're a coach and you take that kind of gamble, you say, all right, we'll stop them. If they go ahead, now Kenny Denard, remember, he hit the first jump shot of the game. If he were to come down and hit three or four more of those, Spinarco hit one. Now all of a sudden, Terry Holland's scratching his head over there and saying, sooner or later, we've got to get out of the defense. But Duke didn't continue to attack from the corners, and that allowed the defense to work perfectly for him. Now to continue the point, Virginia, not only basically a man for man team, they're an excellent man for man team. So naturally, they take a lot of pride in their defense, right? Terry must have done a great job. I think we got a tipper has to him just selling his team on playing this zone. Well, knowing the kind of disciplinarian he is, he probably said, fellas, this is what we're going to play, you know. Uh, but I think the players have to buy it. You know, I think you're right on that, Jim. They've got to buy it. And they have to have confidence. Say, hey, you know, they go, you go back after practice and you're sitting around talking. You say, you know, the coach is crazy. Do you realize what they're going to do if we play that kind of zone? They're going to make all those shots from the corner. So after a while, you know, you start losing confidence in it. And they're probably building confidence as they go along going and say, hey, he's not so crazy. This is, this is going to work. And, and once again, another key point in this second half is going to be Jim Spinark. He picked up three fouls. He cannot afford. Duke's got to play aggressively. So he cannot afford to go out and not play aggressively, and yet he cannot afford to get that fourth foul early because I think he's a real key offensively for Duke in the second half. Now a couple of players to comment on. One, Gene Banks. I talked to him before the game, Bill. He has a lot of pain. He's got a painful injury. He hasn't practiced this week. Foot was stepped on in the Maryland game, a bad bruise on his right foot that told me he wouldn't start, didn't know whether he'd play or not. The doctors uh, told him it'd be a couple of more days. But had he not played the way he did off the bank, then Duke could have been buried. Well, they could have, but he's a great athlete and a super competitor. So you get out in a game like this and everything that's at stake for Duke, you know, I honestly believe that their players think that they've got a shot at number one in the nation. Now, I'm not talking about the NCAA tournament. I'm talking about in the weeks to come. Now, I think they're counting on their friends over at NC State tomorrow for a little right, help. Right, right. But uh, I, I really think they were thinking about that and maybe a little bit predisposed. Uh, Might have hurt him. So there's a lot at stake tonight. And if Gene Banks has a sore foot, I think he's already forgotten about it. Now, another player, Steve Castellan, uh, he really doesn't come through as a, as a top-notch player early in the year. I don't think he played up to his uh, potential last year, certainly. Uh, but now, in the last couple of games we've seen him, he's just been tremendous on defense especially. Well, he is. He's doing a good, solid job. And I think the thing about Steve, he's a very intelligent player and doesn't try to play beyond his capacity. He knows he's not super fast. He knows he's not a great leaper. So he gets good position. He uses his hands well and his body well, takes the shot that he can make. You never see him try to reverse dribble or anything too fancy in there. And those kind of players are nice to have in your team. Now you look ahead. Uh, Virginia's got an 11-point lead. They're a team that's uh, very difficult to deal with anyway on an even ball game. Now what's Duke's problem? How are they going to attack this, Bill? Well, I would imagine Bill Foster will start the second half hoping that his team can make a run without having to go kamikaze, chasing all over the floor, which would be smart. 
uh, he probably is going to have to go for three or four minutes to see how this tempo and, and try to break down that lead in a, in a over a period of time as opposed to all at once. But if after three or four minutes he finds out he's still in the same hole, he's going to have to make a move with some man-to-man -man defensive pressure or maybe that one-three, one-half court pressure because the defense is going to have to create the pressure for him. Okay, Virginia, on the other hand, of course, has been uh, off and running a lot. They've been like trying to get a lot of fast breaks. And a few minutes, Bill, are going to ask you if you think they might pull their horns in on that. But right now, we'll return with more halftime activities after this message. It was a rough exam, really had to cram. Now it's all behind. I got blue ribbon on my mind. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. There are a lot of beers, but there's only one, Pabst. It's brewed to be the best, naturally, with no artificial ingredients. And you can taste it. I've got that blue ribbon on my mind. I don't know you, but I know what that is. That's a Hardee's Big Roast Beef Sandwich. My all-time favorite food. Sliced thin, tender, tall and juicy. And it smells so good. And I am so hungry. Let's go, runner. I'll be back for the french fries. Hardee's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. Back here at Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University in Durham. Uh, this is the Duke University fencing team, by the way. Down here, they have the coach by John Espy, who's in his third season. They won three and lost four last year to finish fifth in the ACC. Uh, this is one game, Bill, and never had any inkling or any desire to take part in. One mistake and Kirk, right? <laughs> Okay, we'll take a look at the national basketball standings this week. Polls were just out yesterday. The Associated Press poll by the nation's broadcasters and writers. Notre Dame, Indiana continue one, two. And there's Duke number three fighting for its life here tonight. Well, they are. And, of course, a big ball game. And that's added pressure on you when you're up that high in the standings to have to maintain it. Remember, Duke and Louisville are going to meet head on in Charlotte on the 18th. That could be a battle of two top five teams in one of the most important games in the basketball season. North Carolina number six, heading up the second five. LSU last night took the lead in the SEC. Mark Kent, what gave Duke a battle here, Bill? You saw that game about a week or so ago. They have a fine team, and in Sam Worth, and they have one of the best guards I've seen in college ball in a long time. So well, that's how the uh, nation's media sees the top uh, teams around the country right now. And here in the ACC, you have a hot bed of basketball in the country over. Duke number one, but their lead, or at least sole possession of first place, a little in jeopardy because North Carolina, a half game behind, has a home game tomorrow night against Maryland, and the whole thing can shift around. Virginia's third place. Bill, if they can get six wins, they're going to be right in the thick of it. Well, they're probably right. I don't think anybody's not in the thick of it right now. Clemson playing excellent basketball, and we've had them uh, two games last week, Jim, and I thought they played as well as anybody can play right now. Turner comes up in about three weeks now, and the uh, Team that winds up on top there gets a coveted by and maybe a very important one this year. And coming up this week, the women's ACC basketball tournament. Three teams really hot in that one, State, Clemson, and Maryland. And uh, that'll be at Reynolds Coliseum in North Carolina State, February 8th, 9th, and 10th. Reserve seat tickets for the tournament are priced at $10 each. They are currently on sale at the Reynolds Coliseum box office. North Carolina State University, Raleigh. The zip code is 27650. The teams have returned to the court, so we'll be back in a moment for the start of the second half after this message. Hello, America. Piedmont Airlines is flying to New Horizons for you. Now, Piedmont flies to Miami and Denver. Boston is a new Piedmont city. Pittsburgh is, too. New York, Chicago, Washington are old friends, of course. Soon, Dallas and Tampa will be, too. At Piedmont, it's been going on for more than 30 years, making new places part of our world and yours. Say hello, hello, Piedmont Airlines. Carolina cities, Carolina towns, banks in every neighborhood, banks all around. So if we want to be your own, 
be a whole lot better than good in CNB. We want to be the best bank in the neighborhood. First half statistics are very revealing, Bill Packer. 53% for Virginia Field, Duke 31. Revealing, they're more like startling when you look down here. Uh, you know, Denard one for four, Jaminski one for five, Bender one for five, Spinarco three for nine, Jaminski with two points, Jeff Lamp with 17. Another point we could have made, Jim, is that foul line. Virginia's not an easy team to let go to the foul line at the end of the ball game either. They can really shoot them. You'll never, you'll never be able to look at those statistics and pick out the whole team. Virginia leads it by 11, 36 to 25. The second half of tonight's telecast is brought to you by the Pilot Life Insurance Company and your local pilot representative. Pilot, the company that helps you through life. And by Hardee's. Hardee's, best eaten in town, up and down and all around. By Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst is brewed to be the best naturally with no artificial ingredients, and you can taste it. By Holly Farms Chicken, nothing but the best for you. By Toyota, you asked for it, you got it, Toyota. By Piedmont Airlines, now serving over 90 cities in 16 states. Piedmont, making new places part of our world and yours. And by NCMB, the people who know that to be the best bank in the state, you have to be the best in the neighborhood. to the office of the ACC Commissioner to the school of the outstanding player or players of this game as chosen by the game announcers. While we're back ready for the second half of tonight's game, the halftime score Virginia 36 and Duke 25. And Bill, uh, do you think Virginia is going to back off any from the running game they opened with here from the outset? Well, you know that running game was a controlled fast break. They throw it out there and took it if it was available. But they weren't just helter skelter throwing the ball around trying to run up and down the court. I think that's a great way to play when you're playing a tempo game because if the other team can't pound all five men on the board, if you say, hey, if we're never going to fast break, you're going to find Duke sending everybody to the boards to rebound. This way they have to play honestly. Well, Bill Foster has chosen not to go with Jim Spinarco at the outset. Spinarco will not start the second half might mean that Bill Foster is going to go out man to man and try to really force Temple. It's going to be real interesting. Ben Taylor will be in the spot. It'll be Virginia's ball in the rotation here from the jump ball situation. And Duke's picking up all court. We got five seconds here to get the ball in play. That's and they get off the long with the lamp. And lamp going for the ball. Holds it beautifully even though he goes to his knee. Lamp finds Casper. What a job he did individually there. I'm really surprised they tried to throw that ball down because Jaminski was there waiting on it. Here you see man to man. Good play by Denard. Throw it away by Denard. And it'll be back coming in on Lamp. And a pistol foul. Leon Gates pushing yep. off. That'll be two shots. Gates third foul. So Virginia picks up the first foul. And Duke has come out here to take the momentum at the outset of the second half, trailing by 11. Well, Bill Foster did the one thing you have to do, and that is to force this game to get moving. And he knew he couldn't do it with Spinarco in the ball game because of the possibility of a fourth foul immediately in the second half. It's a good move on his part, about the only uh, alternative he had. Mike Janinski scored only two points in this ball game, averaging 20.4, and he's over two at the line. It's a full court press again, man to man, double teaming all over the court. Jeff Jones feeling the pressure ball is kicked here by Bender at midcourt. Duke's thrown up a pretty good screen here on the full court pressure. Well, you've got a good quick team. You've got Taylor, Banks, Denard, and Bender out there. Real good quickness, and, and Jaminski in the back line. You go ahead and be the stopper. 
26 to 26, Virginia by 10. Only one point to score in the second half thus far. We played about 40 seconds. They're really sticking on Lamb. There's a loose ball getting away, but as Castlin takes it back, gets off a short jump shot. Rebound is taken away by Taylor, and he's fouled by Stokes. Up. I think a foul may be on Taylor. Look that is. way. Bill yep. Foster didn't like it. Ball control foul on Vince Taylor. Back to the loose man. You'll see the play right here. Castleman had the shot. Now Taylor goes up to get it, gets it knocked out of his hand. I'll be honest with you, Jim, I like your call better. All right, it'll be Virginia's ball. 36-26, Cavaliers lead by 10. And Duke, of course, was thrown out of bounds. I would be, wouldn't be surprised to see Virginia hold it out there a little bit. Duke has to go man to man and pick a man up. Here they go. Now Duke's paired off with a man from Andy Fitz of assignments. Jeff Jones, a freshman guard. Kaminsky's not allowing anybody to handle the ball either. Inside the lamp. And on the floor. Let's see. It's going to be out of bounds to Virginia. Taken out of the end line by Vince Taylor. Oh, lamp in there. Missed a layup, Bill. He certainly did. And a great play by Gates. The hustle play. You know, he isn't uh, a big scorer or anything, but he kept the ball active by diving for it. Lots of time to go on this game. And... Much faster tempo here in the opening minutes of the second half. Duke you know, really applying the pressure. Bill Foster creating exactly the tempo that he would have liked to have had. Ten point lead by Virginia. Lamp going to be trapped in the corner and he spots Stokes. Now here's Duke in a trapping zone. One three one trap right. Dangerous pass and Bender's there. Here comes Bender. Bender taken away and a foul on Bender. Taken away by Jeff Jones, creating a foul on Bender, and Jones does a sparkling job defensively. Boy, Virginia's defense against the fast break tonight has been effective. Well, Bob Bender pulled up to take the jumper, much as we saw Lamp do earlier in the game. Here you see Jones in good position. Bender just lost the handle, and of course, a foul on Bender. Stokes, a tough man to handle one-on-one -on -one at this end of the floor. Very quick Vince Taylor on him. Still a 10-point lead by Virginia. Fans starting to get involved in the ball game right now. Jaminski doing a good job playing his man honestly. Five Almost seconds. There it is. Five seconds going to be Duke's ball. Jeff Jones could not find the open man. And Duke will get the ball. Duke's pressure now working most effectively, more so than it has any other time in the ball game. Jim Sparkle has returned. Now Jeff Jones doesn't have a lot of quickness out there. To pick up his dribble put him in real bad shape. Jim Spinarco back in the lineup. Here's Spinarco. Didn't take him long. What he was sent in to do. Duke doing, Duke doing a good job also. Forcing the ball to be thrown into Jones. Keeping it away from Stokes as best they can. 36 to 28. Duke's cut it to eight points. Virginia has not scored in the second half. You notice Denard on Lamp. I was really surprised, and I can't figure out why Duke put Sinarkel on Lamp there in the first half. There goes Lamp. Lamp again, and Castellan follows through inside with a bang. Oh, shot. great play. Steve Castellan with a hook. 38-28. A break the scoring ice for Virginia in the second half. They went almost three minutes without scoring. Sinarkel again. Rebound Castellan. Double team. Good play. Picked up a lot of strength, hasn't he? Well, you know the thing that's amazing is about a senior ball player. He's been there before, and he's playing under control. Jeff Jones driving. Castellan steps out to give a passing lane. Virginia by 10. This is the tempo that Virginia wants now. Duke's pressure now is not forcing the issues it did earlier. Castellan banking. Fired it right in there. 12 points for Castellan. 40-28. And now Virginia's back to their 12-point lead again. They had it earlier in the first half. And they're playing the same zone defense. Spinaco's pass going to be taken by Lamp. Lamp on the fast break. Left oh, side another great catch. Lamp. Great block. Rebound taken down by Jones. All right, good hustling by Jones to get down floor. 
And there's a foul on the play against Dean Banks. Using the elbow. That was just an incredible catch by Bobby Stokes. It's the second play he's caught on the short hop. Now watch this pass by Lamp. Shoots it through with the left hand. Now that's thrown in behind Stokes. Super block coming up right there. Incredible play. Now there's timeout on the court. With a score, Virginia 40, Duke 28. Now here's the word from the company that helps you through life. Remember when a bargain meant a good car for a good price? It still does. The Toyota Corolla, two-door sedan. And now you can get it for a song. You asked for it, 3748. And that 3748 includes dependable transistorized ignition, unitized body, and great Toyota gas mileage built right in. The Toyota Corolla, the world's best-selling car. And you can get it for a song. You asked for it, 3748. Well, this is where it all begins. From the grain fields of this great country come the nine natural grains that are the basis for the Bunny Country Grain Bread recipe. Whole wheat, bran, rye, cracked wheat, corn, rice, barley, and the new Miracle Grain Tree to Kaylee. Blended together, they say country grain, bunny country grain, regular loaf, one pound thin slice, and country grain home style biscuits. Country grain from the ovens of bunny, natural. Virginia will inbound for the ball, leading by 12. 40, intercepted by Ben Taylor. Oh, great pass. Remarkable. Boy, Taylor is quick, and that was a super play on his part. Steal and a score by Sly. 40 to 30. The Devils are cutting to 10. Now they're applying the pressure once more. The Ocean pressure. Castleman, a long one. Boy, what a game he's playing. 14 points for Steve Castle. 42-30. Virginia back to the 12-point lead. Denard, a long one. He began the game that way. 42-32. Castle a driving oh, for the that top. was some kind of play. Steve Castle and driving for a two-hand duck on the return, and Virginia's up by 12 again. Jim, you talked about, are they going to fast break? That's why you want to break every once in a while. Otherwise, the team keeps putting pressure back on you and never worries about the break. They're playing a smart basketball game. Duke down by 12. 15 minutes to go. It's a lot of time. Vince Taylor and the Jaminski blocked down. He has been stymied. Here's Spinarco following, and rebound here is Banks. Puts it up in front and scores. Steve Banks on the follow. Here comes Virginia again. They're forcing Duke to play on it. 34-44. Virginia by 10. Jeff Lamp gets around his man. Lamp driving, and he's pissed all three shots here in this half. Nice play by Banks. Well, we're seeing some real basketball now. Taylor down scores. Vince Taylor for Duke. Now the lead is back to eight again. With 14 and a half minutes to go. Duke in a rally, and the crowd comes to life. But Virginia doesn't score this time down. Look at Terry Holland take the timeout. He took it already. Yep, timeout for Virginia with 14 26 to go. There's timeout on the court. The score Virginia 44, Duke 36. what's real today artificial this artificial that it's almost everywhere but not in Pabst beers Pabst brews honest beers with an honest taste because Pabst won't shortcut nature with chemicals or artificial ingredients Pabst beers are brewed naturally using the finest barley hops and grain Pabst blue ribbon Pabst extra light on Decker honest beers 
honest taste. In an artificial world, it's nice to know that Pabst brews the best taste in beer, honestly. Pabst, quality since 1844. Now Duke pressure beginning to tell a little bit. Well, you know, there's two uh, schools of thought in regard to calling that timeout right there. One is the momentum is definitely going Duke's way. So you want to kind of slow it down and get your team back in a sinking ball game. The other is if you call a timeout, then during that time, the fans are really going to enjoy it because they know they have you on the rope. So I, I think it was a good move by Terry Holland to take it, try to get his fellows back under control again. 36 to 40, 44, 36, eight point lead by Virginia. New counters with some new people. Johnny Harrell in the ball game going to keep that pressure on. Lee Riker stopped for Virginia. Here's Riker. Oh, Riker and just threw a foul on Sutter. Riker threw an elbow, almost saw, tore Harrell's head off. He's talking to the ref about it a little too late now. Well, there's a little bumping on both sides, I believe, to be honest about it, Bill. Yeah, Riker, you know, looks like a sleepy-eyed kind of guy, but he plays tough basketball. First foul on Sutter, team foul number four. And uh, let's watch that action again. Yeah, we'll see. Johnny Harrell's going to come over here right now. He's going to get what you call elbow in the cheek. Right there it is. No call on the play. Harrell just has a sore jaw. 44 to 36. Good thing he didn't have a glass though. Right. Next time, he doesn't come over quite as aggressive. <laughs> Eight point lead by Virginia. Duke now double teaming the ball and putting the pressure every time on the ball. Well, Harold's really tough out there now. Offensive ball. Good defense by Duke. Foul by Riker. On the ball control, it will give the ball to Duke. And now the Blue Devils have a chance here to pull within six. A trail by 12 here in the second half. 14 minutes to go. 44-36. Well, we said at halftime what Bill Foss would have to do is create his own tempo by defense. And that's exactly what he's done. Put a lot of pressure out there. Force Virginia to put that ball up some. Uh, every possession buys a precious one. And Harold just threw it away for Duke. Turn over to Virginia. Harold quite a bit quicker than Jones out there. Here's Raker again being double teamed. Now there's Lamp working inside for the layup and he's missed all four shots, two layups. Incredible turn of events here for Jeff Lamp who had 17 points in the first half. Gene Banks. That saw the shot but he just wasn't in, in position to take it. There goes Sutter, high arch. Beautiful shot. 44-38, Duke now back within six. Over 13 minutes to go. Jeff Lamp suddenly has cooled off, and Virginia's lead is melting. There's Lamp fighting the ball away shot. Not a good shot. Bad shot selection right there. Johnny Harrell really doing a good job defensively forcing the action. Duke can pull within four, and they got Spinarco driving. Tipped up once, put up by Tominski. And Jaminski's fouled on the play by Castellan, the third one on him. Duke now back in the ball game. The tide is turned, and the Devils are really strong right here. Almost 13 minutes to go. Bernard returns, replacing Sutter. Bender's back in the lineup, replacing Harold. Well, Foster's get his front line back in there. Terry Holland a little bit upset, but his team is still playing the same kind of defense they were. The problem is that they can't get any of the big shots to drop. And Duke taking advantage of it by really going on the board. Mike Jaminski has been held to three points thus far tonight, especially devised zone defense by Virginia. Eyes the line for two shots. 44-39. Duke has really brought this thing back. It was 44-32. They scored seven in a row. Jaminski can make it eight unanswered points. Pressure still on. Stokes almost had his total in the way. Here's Virginia. The lead now bounced only four points. Bonacco avoiding a fourth foul. Now there's Lamp wide open. He hasn't hit yet. That breaks the drought. Lamp was 0 for 5 in the second half until that one. 46 to 40. Notice how quickly Duke's bringing the ball up the court as opposed to the first half when they're kind of just walking it up. There's Spinarco moving nicely. Blocked out again by Castellan. What a game he's played. That's his fifth block shot of the night. Just a great play because Spinarco thought he already had the shot in. He came from quite a ways over there to make that block. Nice play. 
Banks turning on the inside spot. Oh, up. look at Jaminski in there. Yep, and the rebounds run down by Stokes. Virginia gets it with a six-point lead. Gates, pretty tough kid to push Jaminski around. 46 to 40 with 12 minutes plus to go. Castle gets free. Here's Castle way outside. 18 points for Castle. Maybe his best game of the year. Well, it might be as good a game as we've seen an individual play this year when you take into consideration rebounding, passing, ball, handling, shooting. Bender and playing against Jaminski, a class center of the league. 48-42. Virginia's lead is six points. Lots of time. Stokes left unguarded, goes right in, set up and inside, but there's a foul on the oh, goaltending, I think. Goaltending on Jaminski. Bobby, Bobby Stokes gets his six point. 11 and a half to go, Virginia by six. Well, we see some of this action inside. Jaminski playing in there. He's got Gates looking for a hole. There goes the rebound, and that's that elbow thrown by Jaminski, just trying to get position. Six point lead by the Cavaliers. They've been busy tonight mopping up perspiration. There's been a lot of muscle around the floor. Oh, you can see uh, Spinaco rocking there. He's anxious to get the back in the flow. Harold Morrison back in the lineup for Duke. Scott gets his in, replacing Jaminski. Well, Bill Foster trying to keep defensive pressure on. He knows that's how he'd have to pull this game out for Virginia. They're just trying to calm down long enough to get their second win. Eight-point lead by Virginia. They had it up to 12. Duke cut it to four. Inside Harold Morrison, fouled by Owens. Mike Owens, who came in on that last dead ball, picks up a second personal foul. Nice drop-in pass by Kenny Denard. Harold Morrison, who started this game in deference to Gene Banks, who had an injured foot. Biggest game he's had this year was four points. As a sophomore, he was a starter. From West Orange, New Jersey. Team trailing by eight. Two shots. Fifty forty two. Big night tomorrow night in the ACC. Maryland at North Carolina, Notre Dame at North Carolina State. Fifty forty three, seven point lead. Here's Lee Raker from the corner. And there's Castle keeping the ball alive, and it goes out of bounds to Duke. And that's the second time Raker's taken a shot tonight when he really didn't have the ball seated in his hand very well. Once again, maybe a little stale. Been out of action, of course, missing four games. Had a full stomach muscle. 50-43. Duke trying to get back within five points. Over ten minutes to go in the game. Virginia hasn't changed their defensive alignment even with Jaminski out of the game. They're still playing the one-two, well, the one, two-one-two type zone. Bender again from the outside. All three of his baskets have come from real long distance. Good move by Jeff Jones. Now Mike Owens wide open. Boy, Owens broke right in and flashed to the pivot to get open. Owens gets the second basket. 52-45, Virginia. Bernard outside the zone. Rebound will come to Owens. Owens double team gets it away cleverly. Now Jones, long bounce pass, and Lamp is open, waits for help. Why has he been off in the second half? He's about one for seven. Looks like Jeff was looking at somebody to pass to that time instead of concentrating on the back. Exactly ten minutes to go. Seven-point lead by Virginia. Forcing Duke here to the outside shot. Here's Spinarco this time. Spinarco's played a gallant game. He's a solid player, and remember he entered the second half with three fouls and hadn't come close to one fifth. Leads only five, 52-47, and up to 12. 12 both at half. Ball flicked out of bounds by Spinarkel again. Now back in for Duke. Four fresh players, Jaminski, Banks, Taylor, and Harold. Well, Bill Foster really turning over his players at Virginia for the most part has been going the Ironman route. I don't think Castle has been out tonight. Well, that's going to wear Virginia down considerably. They're going to have 
to make the decision if the zone's going to be played now to pull them back out again. As much pressure as Duke's been putting on, I'm sure they're going to want to stay. Virginia's resting Bobby Stokes right now. Here is uh, Raker again. Rebound, Castellan gets it to Owens for a second shot. So Castellan keeps it alive. 54-47, Virginia up to a seven-point lead. Clock winding down with 9.04 remaining. Oh, boy, Jones showed a little quickness there. Jeff Jones. Highly advertised freshman, and he's been no disappointment at all for Terry Holland from Orangeboro, Kentucky. Played at a different high school than did Cliff Hagen a quarter of a century ago. Well, I'm sure a lot of fans were wondering, can Duke win without the two guy having a super night? So far, they've been behind. One of the two times he's been able to get open. Jemeski getting out deep to score, 54-49. Duke has cut it back to five. Castle going back to Steve Jones. Oh, Virginia. Oh, hey, here he Beautiful pass. What a pass to Lamp. He was so open, it was startled everybody. 56 49. Now, uh, Jaminski had left his position to go out and try to make the steal. That's why there was nobody in that area. There's Banks working inside. Great hesitation by Banks. 56 51. Boy, this game has all the uh, earmarks of a championship affair. Lamp trying to go inside with Taylor on him. Two Kentucky boys. Yep, there's another one. Lee Rupp and Jeff Jones from the side. They down by Jaminski. Duke got a chance here to cut with the three. Would be the closest they've been since the first half. It's Banks. Good job. And it's good. He fouled. Banks is pulling up in two. It's a good workmanlike job on Duke's part. Just as Virginia played a solid ball game to get into the lead, Duke is coming back and showing a true character of a champion. 13 points for Banks coming off the bench tonight. 56 53. 7 43 to go, and there's time out on the court. The score Virginia 56 and Duke 53. You hungry, Ernie? Like a bear. You know what I'm thinking about? Hardy's big cheese. Mm. Two pure beef burgers, char broiled, with a whole lot of tangy melted mm. cheese, all hot and juicy. I must be dreaming. You know, I can smell that big cheese. Well, open your eyes, good buddy, and you can see it. <laughs> Bless your warm little heart. Hardy's best eaten in town, up and down and all around. Life insurance? I remember when a pilot life agent came to see me about it. What for, I said. I'm single, got a great job, and the only thing I have to worry about is where I'm going to retire. But then the pilot agent said, what with? I didn't have the answer then, but I have it now. So wherever I retire, it'll be in style. With a little help from the pilot. Pilot helps you through life. Going to see some fine plays right here. Here's Gene Banks making a real power move inside. Hesitates. Uses a Virginia man to set a screen on his own man. Gene not too happy with that play at all. Just going about five feet off the ground. Well, it could be one that'll move Duke back within two points. They haven't been that close since back in the early minutes. Here's that pass by Jones on the inside to Jeff Lamp. And as we said before, Jaminski had already pulled out to try to make the steal, so Lamp found the open hole. But Duke's proving to be a resourceful team. Virginia's found a defense there that's equalized Mike Jaminski up to now. The Blue Devils can get back with another two points if Banks hits the three-pointer. 56-53. Seven minutes and 43 seconds to go. Two on, it's taken by Duke. Total on the inbound pass. They get away from Jeff Jones. Duke can tie the score. Good it play by Spinarkle again. Here goes Banks hitting outside. 56-54 Virginia. Duke looking to tie. And it'll be Vince Taylor on the shot. 
So out of bounds, it'll go to Duke. That was off Jeff Jones. The first went off Mike Janinski's hand, and then off Jones of Virginia. Good positioning by the official. Duke again will have a chance here to set up and tie the score. They wiped out 10 of Virginia's 12-point lead. A handy ball club, Duke. Jaminski's come way out now like they're asking for the ball. You notice how they're starting to drop back in on Sinarco when he goes to the corner. Here's Jaminski on the baseline. Rebound off by Owens, and Spinarco picks up his fourth. Now, that could be a key play. Could be. I was surprised that Duke didn't swing the ball back over to Spinarco's side because he was wide open. It's a tough shot by Jaminski. He likes to make that shot, but a real tough one. Here's Spinarco coming from the side. No question about the foul. Hitting with the body and the arm. Four fouls on Spinarco. Good catch by Jones. 56-54, Virginia by two. Bobby Stokes has been out a long time. I think Terry Holland's feeling that he's going to have to rest him down the stretch here. There's a screen for Lamp. Lamp underneath the Laker gets the layup shot. Tipped in by Castellan. Once more, Steve Castellan comes through on a big play for Virginia. 58-54. Cavaliers by four with 6.25 to go. Tremendous excitement in this game. Spinarkel again for Duke. Rebound will come outside the Laker. Well, Virginia's got it with a four-point lead. The Cavaliers trying to catch you up a little bit now with the momentum. And Bill Foster will have to reorganize his team this next time down because they made their big surge and Virginia staying right with it. There's Lamp missing on the alley-oop. And Jaminski's got it. Beautiful defensive play by Raker. Oh, he's come right in front of Banks, and Raker goes down hard. Remember, he's not fully recovered on his recent injury. Hasn't fully recovered his playing strength. Let's watch it. He hustled uh, very well to get down the court. Sinarco felt Banks coming in behind him. Here comes Raker down, and I'm sure he doesn't want to get hit in the chest. Four-point lead by Virginia, 5.55 to go. Virginia still in a 3-2 zone. Virginia really recognizes the fact Kaminsky wants the lob pass, so Owens is trying to cheat on him as much as possible. It's there. There it is. Bat is down by an elite pass here to Raker. Raker will take it in. Missed the layup. Good defensive play by Bender. Virginia's missed about four layups this half. Still leading by four. Monarco. He hits all the big ones. If Virginia loses the game, it's going to be a frustrating loss for the Cavaliers and the ball with the layups they missed in the game. 58-56, two-point lead, over five minutes to go. Back to the 1-4 offense, trying to break somebody free inside. Oh, there he is. There it is, Raker, for the layup. Now, Raker breaking the baseline to score, 60-56, Virginia by four. Now, that's a great offense against people that are trying to overplay and steal the ball because they're good backcourt up or backdoor opportunities. Bender caught in the air, now Donar driving. Driving shot by Donar. And Duke comes back to cut it to two, 60-58. I don't think anybody goes to the basket harder than Kenny Denard. Nope. Then they go back to the one four again, trying to rub somebody off, get a man free for an easy one. Four and a half minutes to go in the game. Jeff Lamp has not had a good second half. Oh, Raker got away with a push off. Raker racing to get the ball away from Spinarco. Two point lead by Virginia. Oh, are they taking caution now? And it's Raker out of the corner. Clutch basket by Lee Raker. 62-58, exactly four minutes to go. He's a tough kid. When you see Sinarco and Raker playing against each other, you see him two of the toughest defenders in the league. It's still quite looking, a game. Looking for Jaminski, and he's fouled by Owen. Mike Owen's fourth foul against Jaminski. That's team foul number six, which could be a important factor because Duke now goes on the bonus. And the Blue Devils have committed only five fouls. Now there's a timeout on the court. The score, Virginia 62 and Duke 58. There's nothing more exciting than the ACC tournament. 
and you can be there if you win the Holly Farms ACC Tournament Sweepstakes. The grand prize winner receives four ACC Tournament tickets, all transportation, lodging at Holiday Inn Four Seasons, meals at fine restaurants, and personal limousine service. Entry forms and details available at fine stores where you see this Holly Farms display. Deadline for entries, February 10th. Enter now. A couple of years back, crops around here didn't look quite so pretty. The drought hit us hard. Corn turned brown and the ponds dried up. We almost lost it. NCNB kept me going that year. They knew I was good for it, and I was. <laughs> You know, maybe this is one family farm that'll always be a family farm. <laughs> well, it's an intense huddle, Bill, as Bill Foster times running out, 3.51 to go. Saturday, the Crimson Tigers beat the Maryland Terrapins. It'll be a rematch. Game time is 2 o'clock. Check your local listings for that one. See Larry Nance, who's developed into a fine center for Bill Foster at Clemson against Larry Gibson. That'll be an interesting matchup. Well, it will be, and both of those coaches really using that timeout. It'll be Duke's ball on the foul. Our count is 16 fouls against Virginia. So Duke will be on the bonus for the balance of the half. Duke still has a foul to commit on my count. They've committed only five. You know, Jaminski did a smart thing on that last play. He broke from the outside down in behind uh, Owens, who never realized he was coming, just felt the body pressure and tried to hold him off. Now, this is Duke trying to cut it to two. That's Jaminski on the fall away. Mike Jaminski, only his third basket of the game. 62, 60. Notice, Jim, he made that shot with really three people guarding. That's a tough play. Three and a half minutes to go. There's Lamp twisting on the inside. Rebound goes to the floor and it beats the rifle. Here's the Nard. He's the going. Driving. It won't count. He walks. Lost the hand. The Nard takes it away. Oh, a tough break for the Duke Blue Devils. They have the time basket for grab. He lost the handle. Good call by the official. And once again, Jim, there you got the three officials, a guy in position waiting on the play. Now Virginia gets the ball again. A retrieve for them. A two-point lead is 62-60, 3-10 to go. Boy, look at Foster. You know, Holland's sweating just as much at the other end. And I'm wondering where Bobby Stokes is. Uh, Terry Holland's keeping him out a long time, and I wonder if something's... Uh, Could he be hurt? It's a possibility, because you'd figure he'd be in with his experience right now and quickly. Well, uh, here's Virginia now in a controlled game. Well, they're playing their 1-4 offense. Danny Denard's doing a pretty good job on Lamp in this second half. He's just been very aggressive. Looking for help. And here it is in Lee Raker. Now 2.35 to go. Well, Virginia's not sitting on it right now. They're trying to get a somebody free, but Duke's playing some good man-to-man. -man. And it's Lamp going on the inside. Lost the ball to Duke. Duke can tie the score. Now Duke setting up. They want to take care here. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go. Bill Foster talking to Jaminski. Lob pass to the Nard for the flat. High score. Two minutes and five seconds to go. Duke has finally tied it after trailing by 12. I believe Bobby Stokes must be hurt. That was a good play by Kenny Denard because he realized the pressure being put on Jaminski. There's Raker on the inside being fouled. Raker was fouled by Denard, but he prevented Raker from making the layup. One minute and 51 seconds to go, and well, there's Bobby Stokes on the sidelines, uh, Bill. The luck is all right. Yep, yeah, but, but the, you know he must not be, or he'll be in here. 151 to go. There's timeout on the court. The score: Duke 62, Virginia 62. What do I think about life insurance? Well, I always felt the time you need it the most is when you can afford it the least. But then I talked to this pilot life agent who really understood about the high cost of raising kids. Got me all the protection they need now at the price I can afford now. Jason, you've got it made. With a little help from the pilot, of course.
Taiwan Airlines have so many different kinds of discount fares to save you money. We have a lot of fares because so many of you fly to different places at different times for different lengths of stay. If you want to save money the next time you fly, say hello to Piedmont Airlines. Say hello, say hello, hello Piedmont Here we're going to see that great lob pass. And of course, Virginia really concentrating in the zone. Where's Jaminski? Where's Jaminski? Denard comes in from behind the zone. Excellent pass. Good catch by Kenny Denard. Now, pressure spot here for Lee Raker. Jim, here we see Bobby Stokes down on the end line. And he's running uh, outside. I don't know if we can get him on the camera. He's testing a foot or an ankle. Yeah. Maybe he pulled a muscle, but he's down there trying to loosen up on the sideline. All right, two shots for Raker. Oh, it's a tough spot to be in. A lot of waving arms facing Raker here. Now another chance here to untie for Virginia. And Virginia will get the rebound. Oh, that's a big one. Look Very seldom are going to see Raker miss uh, two in a row. Yep, he's one of the best free throws in the league because he's been out for four games. There's Jeff Lamp in the air. Rebound, and it will go to Virginia again. Raker comes up with the ball. Oh, he is almost stolen by Bernard, but he's on the end line. 131 to go. I'm surprised Virginia's trying to get a shot. There. It's absolutely amazing. And there again, positioning of the official. Now watch where he is on this play. Ball going. There's Kenny Nard. There's the official right down on it. Super play. Good cover. High score, 62-62. Out the lamp they go. They are due to the zone. Virginia will try to hold it here. Like, well, I'm sure they will. I don't think Bill Foster can stay back in that zone. Now, he's going to have to play man to man. He's going to have to come out. But I think Virginia would be happy for the last shot. When you're playing at home, you've got to force the action. Denard doing a great job on Lamp, forcing him to take some real tough shots. Castellan. Castellan driving, and he's fouled on the play by Johnny Harrell. So we go back to the pressure free throw line again. This time we Steve Castle, who hasn't been up there tonight, but what a game he's played. A 72% shooter on the season. 20 points this is his top output of the season. He scored 19 last week against Lake Forest. Now he looks at the little sea of waiting on. That's incredible. Virginia missed three straight free throws. Now Castellan will try again. One minute, five seconds to go. Virginia breaks on top by one point, but Duke's got the ball. 63-62. Duke's going to want a timeout, I think. You're right, Jim. 58 seconds to go. Bill Foster wants to set up a play. He's got to make his decision here what to do. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment, but first we'd like to take an opportunity to thank Director of Athletics Gene Corrigan, head basketball coach Terry Holland and his staff, and Sports Information Director Todd Turner from the University of Virginia for their help in tonight's telecast. And from Duke University, our thanks to the Director of Athletics Tom Butters, head basketball coach Bill Foster and his staff, and Sports Information Director Tom Mickel. Our thanks also to our stage manager Bob Royce. Well, Terry Holland talks to the Cavaliers. They can ill afford the foul. Duke's on the one and one, an excellent free point team. And Duke now, they've got a little pressure too. Do they try to score immediately, giving Virginia the ball with a one point lead? Jim, I think that if you're Duke University, you've got to go for a score early because you don't want it to go down the wire. They've got real powerful rebounding in there with Jaminski and Banks and Denard. Virginia's got to be a little bit weary. Of course, you can really do anything you have to with 57 seconds of the ball game. But I think Duke will try to go for a, a realistic shot as quickly as they can. We may see Bobby Stokes by no, I don't know. He has his jersey off. You know he wants to go back into the ball game. There he is. Bobby Stokes. He's the pressure player ball handler for Virginia. And he's seen only limited service here in the second half. He's been out for a long stretch. And we're certain now it's some kind of a minor injury, a full muscle. Isn't anything serious? He's been moving around. 
Duke's ball to midcourt. Virginia's been in the zone the entire ball game. That may be a first for Terry Holland's coaching career. And in the same zone also. This defense was designed strictly for this ball game, and they played it extremely well. And what they have to be careful of to concentrate so much on Jaminski is what happened the last time in the lob to Denard. All right, 50 seconds to go. Duke trailing by a point. Surprised Bender's not in the game also. A little better percentage shooter than Johnny Harrell. They're wasting a lot of time right here. 40 seconds to go. Here goes He's Banks. got it. Banks baseline. Gene Banks. Virginia gets the ball with 30 seconds to go. Once again, Jim, you concentrate on where you think the ball is going to go, and that's where a bank can really hurt you. Duke, Duke leads by one point. And they went zone. Terry Holland probably going to give a call a timeout again himself. He's in some trouble. They had Lamp there, but he is going to take it. And now there's the timeout with 10 seconds to go. So we're going to come down to one final shot, it appears. And Virginia right now, the uh, possession of the ball, they got Jeff Lamp, a leading scorer in the conference, who's been stone cold here in the second half after 17 point first half. And 10 seconds, or it's all over. One point lead by Duke. Phil, it's been our most exciting game of the year, I think. Well, I think from a strategy standpoint and a tempo standpoint at the beginning of the game, and a tremendous comeback by Duke University. Right now, Jim, you really got a tough job. If you're if you're Bill Foster, you say, okay, we go back in the zone and make them shoot on over it, but then we're going to give somebody an open shot. Maybe they go ahead and play a little pressure. If you're in Virginia, you come out, you're trying to decide right now, do you go to your key man, let him try to put it up, he's having a real cold hand in the second half, or do you go to an alternative shooter, like a Castellan on a step-out move? I think a good thing to do in a situation like this when you're a coach is to call that second time out after you see how the man's going to set up if you get that opportunity. Well, Virginia has called uh, only two times out. they got three to go. Just ten seconds left here in the... Regulation. Of course, those three missed foul shots for Virginia really loom big right here because they could be in control of the ball game at this point. It's the only time Duke has led the entire second half. Adam been in lead since back very early in the ball game. Now you notice Owens is in the ball game, the rebounders. Raker and Lamp, two reasonable guys to take the shot and alternative being Castle. This is always a key time. I look at that timeout, that sideline out of bounds right there and think about the day that Duke had North Carolina and Bobby Jones yep. almost from that spot made the big steal. Now Duke sealed zone and now they, they jumped no, they man for man. Right, they sealed the zone and went man to man. They're not going to get a shot off. And there's Owen firing and the game will be oh, over. Right. Duke will win it. One second to go and it's all over. Duke on a last second shot by Gene Banks comes back at an incredible, unbelievable comeback to hand Virginia our most disheartening loss and the winners came by one point. Tremendous victory for Duke. A disappointing game for Virginia, but that's the way great games always are. Our play of the game, of course, is going to be Gene Banks of the Duke Blue Devils who played an outstanding game. Well, that's the end of the game with a final score, Duke 64 and Virginia 63. And Gene Banks is our player of the game. We'll be back after this message. Sail with the pilot at the wheel on a ship sturdy from its mast to its keel to rise through storm and wave in church and while you stay sail with the pilot all the way so get on board the pilot ship today Wow, what a finish. I think even the Duke fans are still a little stunned over that one, Billy. Well, they are a little bit stunned, and that's, of course, a very, very big win for them. And Terry Holland's team played a super basketball game tonight. They had it all the way until the last uh, 10 seconds of the show. You know, that was a smart move by Bill Foster, showing the zone on the sideline out of bounds and then actually being set up for man-to-man. -man. Virginia. They jumped immediately to the man-to-man with a Holly Farm Scholarship Award, a $1,000 grant, is presented to the office of the ACC Commissioner to the school of the outstanding player of the game as chosen by the game announcers. 
And tonight, the outstanding player of this game off the bench is G. Banks from Duke University. Just played a courageous game. He got the basket and won the game, 18 points. And uh, Duke remains on top of the Atlantic Coast Commerce by the skin of their teeth here tonight. Virginia, with a 12-point lead in the second half, all but pulled off the upset. Has to be a very demoralizing victory, a loss, at least for the moment, for Terry Holland. Well, I think it might be initially, but if they'll reflect back on their play tonight and their style of play, they have to be very, very satisfied. This is a good Virginia basketball team. They got Lee Raker back, but they played uh, most of the second half without Bobby Stokes. We can't tell you why now, but we think it's some minor injury. Well, it looked that way. He was trying to go through some stretching exercise, Jim. Never did get back into the ball game, as you pointed out. And you would have to think that he would have been in there had he been able to. Duke uh, wound up with three players and double figures. Banks, Spinarco, and Denard. Jeff Lamb, who got 17 points in the first half, wound up with 21. The same as uh, Steve Castler, which is his season's high for the year. And nine points for Lee Raker, who returns to the Virginia lineup. So to now, it's... Uh, Interesting Four. night tomorrow night now, Jim. That it is, because Maryland moves in to North Carolina. Sure, the Tar Heels had their biggest star start pulling for a Virginia upset, which would have put them in better stead in the ACC standings. And North Carolina State tomorrow night entertains the nation's number one ranked team, Notre Dame Fighting Irish at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh. And a game that has the Irish, I'm certainly, I'm sure, concerned and should uh, be quite a matchup in that ball game. Now for Duke, they look ahead to some interesting uh, contests, including a matchup coming against the University of Louisville in Charlotte on February 18th. But they must also play Pitt here Saturday, then uh, North Carolina State followed by the University of Maryland on the road, and then to Clemson. So it's still a rough road ahead for the nation's third-ranked team, the uh, Duke Blue Devils. We'll look over the other scoring for uh, Duke University. Gene Banks, 18 points. Kenny Denard, 10. Mike Jeminski with 9. Uh, that might be his lowest scoring game of the season it is. The first time that Jeminski has been out of double figures, he has scored 9 points or 10 points against LaSalle. But that must be credited to Virginia's well-conceived and well-played defense. Monarchal had 16 points, six points for Bob Bender, two for Jim Sutton, four for Vince Taylor, and one for Harold Morris. For Virginia Cavaliers, a Steve Castle and Jeff Lamb had 21 apiece. It was perhaps Castle's outstanding performance uh, as a Cavalier. Lee Breaker with nine off the bench for the first time in four games. Bobby Stokes, uh, six points, and six for Mike Owens. The Cavaliers now drop to five and four in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and that should leave them in third place in the standings right now. Ahead of the Clemson Tigers, but dropped them a little bit farther back of North Carolina. Duke makes it seven out of eight in the ACC and keeps them solidly on top. This Saturday, the Clemson Tigers beat the Maryland Terrapins. Game time is two o'clock. Check your local listings for that one. That'll come to you from Coldfield House in College Park, Maryland. Now this is Jim Packer for Billy Packer from Cameron Edward Stadium saying good night. The executive producer of Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball is Councilman D. Chesley. Director, Billy McCoy. TV coordinator, Marvin Skeeter Francis. from TPC Communications Incorporated. Final score, Duke 64, Virginia 63. This has been a C.D. Chesley production.